guys, what's going on? It's Ash here coming at you today in Clash Royale. And thank you for clicking on this video because it's going to be a good one. I did a lot of research before this video. I found four amazing matches from Sin Wung, who is Expo Master. He's widely considered the best player in all of CRL Asia. He's an incredible, incredible player because of his deck versatility. He can play every deck. When you see Expo Master, the name, you think Expo. He seldom plays Expo, although we will share a replay against Expo versus Golem. If any of you guys want some tips against a hard counter, Golem lightning at that, and he comes away somehow with a victory. So it's kind of a best of Expo Master here, and I can't wait to show these replays to you guys, because I think you'll walk away with a much uh, better understanding of the player, the caliber of player that Expo Master is, and a lot more respect for the guy, especially when you see him on December 1st in the CRL World Finals with King Zone Dragon X, his team. So here we go. The first match here uh, from Expo Master is against Reiki Jones, who also will be at the World Finals representing Ponos Esports, who has an, another stacked roster. They're a Japanese team in the CRL. But guys, the four deck links that I'll be showing you guys will be in the description below if you want to try any of the decks out. I love his deck selection. He's not afraid to take a meta deck and sub in cards that he likes. And you can tell two of them right off the bat here. It's going to be the Guards in the Inferno Tower, which we haven't seen yet, but is in this deck. I bet you can't even guess the win condition at first glance on this deck. There's the Inferno Tower. Inferno Tower in Guards. Expo Master loves a strong defense. And I think it's really cool, and it's probably kind of something that a lot of you guys can take away from this video too, is that he's not afraid to make adjustments. You know, and that goes with every deck that I show here to you guys on the channel. Maybe I, I'm sharing a giant deck and and you, you have problems with whatever. You have problems with Royal Giant in your trophy range. Well, sub in that mini P.E.K.K.A. Don't be afraid to make substitutions where they benefit you, given your ladder range or just given your propensity uh, to, uh, you know, how you are as a player, basically. So here we go, guys. Uh, into double elixir time. And he's only used one graveyard so far. So really testament to the patience that you have to have as a good graveyard player. And he's very, very, very patient. He's technically sound. He's patient. He rarely makes any mistakes, and the, the real cool thing, aside from his versatility, is he's like a chess master, guys. Sometimes he makes unorthodox and a little bit strange plays, but it's only because he's thinking about the counter or the card that he needs in rotation two, three, four, or even five plays in the future. He's an incredibly intimidating opponent to go against. I would hate to go against Expo Master if I was a CRL pro. So here we go, guys. A little bit of spam, a lot of bit of spam coming down the right lane. We have Magic Archer, and you can see that's the Magic Archer. It's is it before or after the uh, the nerf? I, I'm not sure if I can even tell at this point. I think it looks like it's before the nerf. Yeah, look at that. Hits that, that swing speed. It's got to be, right? And Magic Archer actually does connect, getting really some of the only damage that he's going to uh, give up in this match here uh, to that Magic Archer. And the Magic Archers are kind of stacked up in the lane. Royal Ghost now right into the lane. Royal Ghost is going to run right into those Archers, and guards are played immediately after the log comes down. Here's a log of our own here, and Ice Golem is back in rotation to block that Royal Ghost. And hey, what do you know? The Inferno Tower is back in rotation as well. And that's what I was saying, guys. The fact that he loves Inferno Tower, even in X decks he loves inferno tower and guards and, and almost all his decks and a, a, quite a few of them that i'm going to be showing with you guys today is he just likes a strong defense to his decks and i i love that about him this is good poison value here i think he's going to take it he does so we have the skeletons in the poison we have the magic archer in the poison the mega minion in the poison the pekka is kited with another ice golem that was a really really smart defensive sequence there by expo master and here he goes in with another graveyard push i don't think this is going to result in too much damage uh because the opponent goes in with a battle ram and here he goes right here so we have guards in cycle he's always making sure he has either his guards or his inferno tower ideally his guards in rotation for that battle ram that way he can save the inferno tower for the pekka if he needs it but you can't always be so predictable so you have to switch it up and he does a good job of doing so this time he doesn't even want to bother with that magic archer he uses the poison against it so i think in a second here we're going to have a base race guys here we go he's setting up with the ice golem and the mega minion and the graveyard now all he has on defense here are guards and he has log back in cycle log's going to push back the royal ghost and the battle ram meanwhile on offense mega minion does connect with the tower there of course both players just going all in at the end there, and Expo Master knew he had him uh, just with that big, strong graveyard Mega Minion Ice Golem push. And there he is. That's the man himself, Expo Master. Let's go into match number two here against Beaver from Sandbox in CRL uh, Asia, another Korean team, Sandbox. So this time, Expo Master's on the top of your screen, guys, but you, I, I hate the, the, the replays 
when the, the players at the top of the screen just annoys the hell out of me. However, I think you guys are really going to enjoy this match. This is one of my favorites of the video here. And you can see already off the bat, he's playing kind of a weird combo. You usually don't see Barbarian Barrel with bait decks. With the Goblin Barrel decks, usually you see Log. But wait till you see what this deck is. And it's really, again, just shows you that you never know what to expect when you go against Sin Wung. So here we go here. Uh, Royal Giant chops down that Dark Goblin. He has the wherewithal not to protect that Dark Goblin. He could have. He could have, you know, done many things there. Instead, he decided to just kind of reload and play defense. What did I say about the guards Inferno Tower? He has them in like every deck. He, he loves guards and he loves Inferno Tower. You never know what he's going to pl be playing, but you do know a couple cards that he's usually going to be playing. And it's tough to break through the guards Inferno Tower combo. I feel like I mentioned it, you know, quite a bit here, but still it, it's noteworthy that those two cards I think are maybe even a bit underrated, especially guards personally. So here leaking a lot of elixir is Beaver, but Beaver knows that he has such a strong defensive deck, what can he really play at this point? He'd rather have Expo Master make the first move. So then he goes in, you can tell he's trying for a P.E.K.K.A. push here in the right, and there's the P.E.K.K.A. coming down right there. Now that's going to allow Sin Wung to not be able to use his Inferno Tower here because of that E-Wiz, but he just has patience there, and then drops the guard in the pocket behind the P.E.K.K.A. in the E-Wiz. That was a beautiful value, and that's really testament to the value of guards right there, right? Stopping a P.E.K.K.A. and an E-Wiz, all for three Elixir. Thank you very much that allows him to have extra elixir and that elixir advantage and combo the fireball with the hog rider against those rascals so yeah you saw it. it's hog rider hog rider goblin barrel obviously it looks kind of like a mid trophy ladder deck right doesn't this look like a 4,000 uh, trophy ladder deck. It is not. This is a CRL deck playing in a contest for $1 million. And I love the kind of the ingenuity of Expo Master. And here he goes, applying some pressure here right at the bridge, trying to get an, a card out of uh, the opponent's hand there. And it's an E-Wiz. So a beautiful three for four trade there. Now he has the Inferno Tower set up. And, and watch what you're going to see him do with the Inferno Tower. Not in this sequence, but the next Inferno Tower. It's just really a brilliant move that a lot of you guys should pay attention to. So we'll be sure we pay attention to that when it comes up. I think it might be now. Does he use Inferno Tower now? He has Dark Goblin set up uh, for defense. Now he has the Inferno Tower. The Inferno Tower, however, is not going to pull the P.E.K.K.A. so he has to place the guards there. So look at this. This is going to be beautiful here. Check, the, check out this Inferno Tower. It's going to take down the, uh, the P.E.K.K.A. Now we have the Dark Goblin. We, we managed to evade some of those rascals. Fireball comes down, and we have a surviving... Okay, it wasn't this Inferno Tower either. Come on, Ash! <laughs> Too many Inferno Towers. There's one of them, and basically I'm just going to tell you what happens, right? There's going to be an Inferno Tower placed on defense for Expo Master. And he's going to have it at like half health or two-thirds health after it's done defending. And what he does is he just keeps applying pressure with princesses at the bridge, just being very aggressive. It might be... No, it's not this time either, I guess, right? But he just keeps continuing to be very aggressive at the bridge, trying to get extra value and forcing cards out of the opponent's hand. You guys will, it will understand more when I when it happens. So here we go. Guards again for the P.E.K.K.A. No big deal. And you can see Beaver must be incredibly frustrated right now. He has not gotten any damage, barely any damage, on either of Expo Master's towers. So here we go. Hog does get one big swing on that left tower, taking it down to 743. And we have the Princess set up in, the, uh, in a beautiful Barbarian Barrel that's going to pull the Royal Ghost back, make him visit. Princess will help out from the opposite lo uh, opposite side lane, and here comes another Goblin Barrel that's going to get the log out of the opponent there. Doesn't fall for the juke, but we have guards on that uh, that barbarian, the barbarian, the battle ram, excuse me. And then we have a Dark Goblin on Dark Goblin here in the left lane. Uh, Hog Rider comes down again. Pekka is ready for him though. That's going to deny any hits on that Hog Rider. So this it has to be this time, guys. It must be right. So Dark Goblin's going to do a little bit of work on the chip damage. We're going to send in a Goblin Barrel. The Inferno Tower will take care, uh, forcing out a Fireball too on that Goblin Barrel. The Inferno Tower is going to take care, and this is it. Like, it's a small play, right? It's nothing too crazy. But we go in aggressive, knowing that we have that Inferno Tower at three quarters health, so we can get a ton of value, and we can play a little bit more aggressive temporarily than we normally would. And we go in with a Hog there and a Goblin Barrel, and despite the Battle Ram finally connecting on that right tower, that's going to be GG. That was a really, really interesting match, and that's a deck that really performs well on Ladder too. so if a lot of you guys want to combo that Goblin Barrel in Hog Rider uh, in a deck together, I think you'll have a lot of success with it. So here we go, Expo Master in the next match, and this time he is playing Expo, guys. So I don't think I'm going to do the deck uh, selection. I, I hope you guys don't mind on this video, just because I kind of want to keep it a surprise what cards he uses. But again, all the deck links will be in the description below, as they always are on this video. So Lumberjack is going to get to his right tower. But now check this out, guys. The uh, Master Hong, the opponent here, has played Tombstone and Lumberjack. 
Really heads up play by Expo Master. He's leaking Elixir. He's waiting to see what he's going to play next. He splits Archers in the back. Now, there's a big, big mistake coming here from Master Hong. That's it. There it is. He sees that Night Witch. He knows there's no Lumberjack or Tombstone in cycle, and he doesn't have enough Elixir to play the Golem, and that is it. Of course, he has enough Elixir to play Lightning, but still, it's going to be a huge lock on this Expo here for Expo Master. Really uh, putting the Master onto the Expo in this matchup here. So it's a tough Golem matchup, and obviously, Master Hong at this point is going to be ready. So even though he got that early connection there, that was just a really heads-up play. He made it look easy, but again, he saw a Tombstone. Okay, that's fine. He saw a Lumberjack, and then he leaked Elixir, saw the Night Witch in the back. He knew he was at 6 Elixir, so he just dropped the Expo. I mean, what else is he going to do? He had no Lumberjack, he had no Tombstone, he had no Golem, or he had Golem in hand, but not enough Elixir to play it. Speaking of Golem, there's the Golem. So it's going to be a Golem playing the Expo right into the Golem here, guys, and now it's going to be difficult to break through, but we've already done so much damage, and of course we have the Inferno Tower in this deck, because, you know what? Would it be Expo Master if he's not playing Inferno Tower? No, he prefers Inferno Tower even in Expo decks, which traditionally use the Tesla. So here we go. It's going to be a, uh, another three-quarters health Inferno Tower here left standing, and we're approaching double Elixir time. So let's see how Master Hong is going to play this here. Trying to get a little bit of chip damage, just keep our cycle going with an Ice Spirit there. And here comes the Archers, and there's the Expo. So probably we'll get a Lightning uh, from the opponent here. Let's see what he does. A Golem or a Lightning? What are we going to see? It looks like it's going to be Golem. So Golem is, okay, it's going to be Lightning, excuse me. So we, get, we give up another like 100 or 200 damage from that Expo connection on the right tower, and then Ice Golem to block this baby dragon. So the opponent really hasn't gotten anything going here at all, guys. And we have the, the another Expo on the board, and immediately, boom, the Golem comes down. So we have the Golem, or the opponent has the Golem, but now he's forced to use that Lumberjack, and just immediately Lumberjack's going to be uh, absolutely burnt into by that Inferno Tower, and things are looking pretty good here for Expo Master. Against, you know, you can't pretty much find a more difficult matchup than Golem, Lumberjack, Tombstone, Lightning if you're an Expo player. It just goes to show that Expo, even if you are a hard counter, even in this hard counter meta, you can still have success. You can still play for a draw against matchups like this or just get lucky with heads-up plays like we saw in the very beginning. So it's going to be a high Inferno Tower here, immediately targets onto that Golem and gets that Lightning out of the opponent there, causing the opponent with that high Inferno Tower to have to play a Lightning not getting too much value. That was a 6 Elixir Lightning on the Inferno Tower, and that was it. So a good patience there shown by Expo Master. Now he has four Archers on the board here. Two of them will be deleted by that baby dragon and we do finally give up some damage there to that golem hitting to the getting to the tower at the, uh, 1391 HP remaining but all we really need to do at this point is just poison cycle and he goes for that opportunity right now and again a high inferno tower here guys just another small tip that you guys can pick up in your own gameplay if your opponent has lightning place the high inferno tower Pre deny them the lightning value and there we go the poison's down and that's gonna be GG against golem lightning Lightning Expo wins. All right, so here we go into the last match that I have set aside for you guys. This is going to be an interesting deck too, kind of an interesting take on the Pompeo Minor Balloon Cycle deck. However, this one has Mini Pekka in it. It's not a new deck by any stretch of the imagination, but I think you guys are going to enjoy the gameplay. And he starts out with just cycling a Zap on the right tower of the opponent here from Bren Esports. So here we go. It's going to be an Ice Golem in the back to uh, intercept that Royal Ghost, and then the opponent comes in with an E Wiz in the back as well so just slow playing this early on fireball comes out from the opponent there now we know we have the elixir advantage let's see how we respond to this e-wiz we're going to have an e-wiz of our own so an e-wiz into the left lane the opponent's going to have to respond to that and he does with a log there getting a little bit more chip damage onto our left no i take it back no chip damage <laughs> and a little bit of a uh, a log too far back so we go in with just a minor here again trying to uh find out what deck the opponent is playing here and it, it looks like a giant deck right we have the prince we have baby dragon now it really could even be like i don't know it's, it's a weird giant deck is what it is 
So mini Pekka goes into the Prince here, and again, uh, just smart defense here. Nothing too aggressive, nothing too crazy. We haven't shown our win condition yet. Just a uh, a minor mini Pekka, and check this out. This is a win condition time, right? Because we don't have mini Pekka in cycle. We don't have Mega Minion in cycle. Our two best cards against a Royal Ghost Giant push in the left lane. So we're forced, and that was a beautiful minor there, predicting that E Wiz. He didn't get it there, but did you see where he placed that minor, guys? It was a really smart play there by Expo Master, even though he has to. He has to kind of try to tower trade there. We didn't even get the right tower down from the opponent. But knowing that we didn't have mini P.E.K.K.A. in cycle, Mega Minion, uh, it just wasn't a good opportunity, a good time to try to defend, right? He could have tried to defend with an E-Wiz, but that's not going to do much of anything, right? E-Wiz against a Royal Ghost, so we'll just get absolutely decimated. So here we go. It's going to be a Charging Prince in the left lane. Mega Minion played by Expo Master. He has Ice Golem, I believe, in cycle. Does he even need it? I'm ah, just going to take the charge. He doesn't even care. He doesn't want to burn his cards, uh, his, all his good counter cards defending a charge on the king tower and he goes in with a balloon in the opposite lane here the uh the the strong side tower he knows he's probably he's gonna have to take well not probably he's definitely gonna have to take both towers down right in order to win this match so he goes in with that aggressive balloon play taking that left tower down to 1394 hp fireball comes raining down on that prince mini pekka didn't get that second hit unfortunately on that prince but we're gonna be ready with some defense with that e -wiz. so e -wiz against that prince minor comes in we need to take that right tower down sooner rather than later here and unfortunately he clips uh, uh our miner with that e-wiz but a beautiful zap to go ahead and retarget and get that uh, tower into fireball range and he does so there so now we're going to go into sudden death overtime with 1901 remaining on our right tower 1394 thanks to that balloon push we saw earlier on the opponent's left tower so here it comes another annoying royal ghost push royal ghost will actually make a uh, connection with that tower but we go in with a balloon ice golem fireball is going to go ahead and, and redirect that uh that balloon to the king tower so a really nice heads up play there by the opponent but we get a little bit of chip damage onto that left tower 1202 1385 is really anybody's match and this deck we're going against here just gonna be, always be very careful of that play right the giant in the pocket have to be ready with the mini pekka every single time because we don't have nato we don't have any sort of defensive building in this deck and surprisingly no uh inferno tower and no guards in this deck so here we go e was getting a tremendous amount of value there on the left it looks like we're just gonna let this Royal Ghost. No, I stand corrected. We're not going to let the Royal Ghost go. Maybe he's going to try to do something here. Meanwhile, as Mini Pekka gets to that King Tower for 1942, a few swings on that King Tower. And again, this time he's going to try the uh, Giant at the Bridge. And Ice Golem is going to immediately block that Prince. So, really nice play there. And he figures the Mini Pekka has things under control there, at least for momentarily on defense. We send in the Miner and the Balloon. A very aggressive play here by Expo Master. We have Ewiz back in rotation on defense. He uses the Fireball, the opponent there, on defense. So we have that E-Wiz still standing there, able to defend against that Prince Giant push. And here it comes. It's an Ice Golem. It's the Balloon. Baby Dragon does make contact to the tower. 400, 292, and then boom! Expo Master gets the tower down with that Expo, and he drops the Hog Screamy emote. Very apropos for that match, guys. So I hope you came away, like we said, with a better appreciation of Expo Master. We'll be seeing him live in Tokyo. I will be actually meeting him again. I saw him at CCGS World Finals in London, but I will be taking off either today or tomorrow, depending on when I upload this uh, video. And uh, guys, go ahead and make sure you tune in. Check out Expo Master. Root on his team, if you're, especially if he's in your fantasy lineups. Thank you so much for watching this video all the way till the end, guys. I really appreciate it. Huge shout out to Stature Royale and Bren Chong, my YouTube partner. Check out his information as well. Guys, thanks so much for watching, and as always, take care, guys.